USA Ultimate is proud to present the 2014 US Open Ultimate Championships. And this is the men's finale between Denver Johnny Bravo and San Francisco Revolver live from the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. Look at our championship bracket and how we got here. Johnny Bravo yesterday, 15-11 winners over Sub-Zero as Revolver passed Boston Ironside by that same 15-11 score. Now two of the top teams matching up for the men's championship. I'm Wayne Randazzo alongside Evan Leffler, the voice of Ultimate, and this is the matchup everybody wanted to see, Revolver against Johnny Bravo. Yeah, this should be a showcase of the finest athleticism our sport has to offer, and you know both these teams have been mighty impressive. Revolver, a perennial championship contender, and Bravo, perhaps the most intriguing roster of talent this year. And here's what's on the line today. These two teams could meet for a world title a month from now. One of these teams is going to get a big mental edge in pursuit of that goal. And both of these teams have tremendous talent on both sides. We'll talk all about their big stars throughout this day. Yeah, there's absolutely true. We start with Denver Johnny Bravo, coached by Bob Cryer. He's been at the helm for a while. These guys won the U.S. Open title two years ago. Five and two through a pool play. And, you know, there's some guys in Ultimate that you just start to recognize by one name. Guys like Chase and Clark and Bo. And we're starting to know Jimmy in that context. Jimmy Mickle has just been an absolute phenom. Obviously, he's the Callahan Award winner. But he continues to get better. His coach said he's been basically perfect for the tournament. And Johnny Bravo led by Jimmy Mickle, the 2014 Callahan Award winner, a national champion at the college level in Colorado, trying to win the U.S. Open title against this Revolver team that certainly is bestowed by its own star level. Well, it's amazing how Revolver has created a program of turning role players into stars, and in some cases, turning stars into role players. But Bo Kittredge is going to be very important for San Francisco today. You might remember when these two teams met in the semis in Frisco last fall. Johnny Bravo made a run, and then Bo Kittredge took over. He can take over in a number of ways. Obviously, he's improved his throws to the point where from anywhere on the field, he can shoot to the end zone, but he's most dangerous when he's going deep. One of the finest athletes in our sport, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch him go against Bart Watson and Kurt Gibson and Sean Keegan and some of the other studs that Bravo has to throw at him. They've got a lot of guys to throw at him. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. The opening pull coming up in our men's championship game. Denver Johnny Bravo, San Francisco Revolver, the title on the line at the U.S. Open next. Ask your retailer today for Discraft Ultrastar. The Triple Crown Tour, America's most competitive and prestigious series of ultimate tournaments. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of ultimate in the United States. To learn more about ultimate or find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. Men's championship starting lineups, Sean Keegan, Jesse Ream, Jimmy Mickle, and Owen Westbrook. The cutters for Denver, Johnny Bravo, Mark Watson, Ryan Farrell, and Brett Matsuka for Bob Cryer's squad. Johnny Bravo trying to win for the second time in three years against Revolver with Higgins, Rasmussen, Sanchez, and Bo Kittredge. Their cutters, Schlackett, Cahill, and Schlag. Mike Payne, the head coach for San Francisco Revolver. We've seen two past U.S. Open champions win today. And Johnny Bravo trying to be a third on this day that has turned out to be a warm one, 88 degrees. Still fairly humid, fairly windy, although more of a cross breeze now than when we had an upwind, downwind situation earlier. Now the wind kind of blowing everywhere. First team to 15 wins. Seven players on each side at a time. Halftime starts when one team gets to eight. Disc can go in any direction. Can't run with it. Only 10 seconds until you can pass it. And it's a largely self-officiated game, which the team switch ends after each score. And we should see plenty from both offenses here today as Revolver tries to win its second straight U.S. title. Johnny Bravo trying to win its second in three years. These are the only two teams to ever win the U.S. Open on the men's side, and that will continue to be the case after today. As this men's championship is underway, it's Revolver against Johnny Bravo, and it's Johnny Bravo, Scott, with possession to start it off. It'll be interesting to see how both teams match up early in the game. Russell Wynn chasing Ryan Farrell around. Nathan White's on Owen Westbrook. Underneath Revolver has Alex Evangelides chasing Jimmy Mickle. Downfield, Bart Watson for Bravo, former Revolver star, being covered by Taylor Leahy. 
Ashland Joy playing D-line for Revolver. Typically an O-line guy, but since he can't go to Worlds, he's playing D-line here. Ashland got into medical school, so he's not going to be able to go to Worlds. Double-edged sword of getting into med school. Joy chasing Jesse Ream on this first O point for Bravo. And that's uh, Lucas Dahlman, I beg your pardon, Eli Kearns guarding Brett Matsuka. In the hands of Jimmy Mickel, but a stoppage. As this men's championship is underway here in Minnesota, the observers stepping in for the first time. As Jimmy Mickel with the low line throw that finds its target. Russell win with a great bid and then in accidentally kneed in the head by Farrell. Farrell's momentum pushed him so far back, he was almost standing next to Mickle by the time he stopped. Now Sean Keegan has it now for Johnny Bravo. It's amazing how hard these guys cut downfield with such commitment to the cut. Red zone chance for Johnny Bravo. That one almost got away, but Bart Watson has it. The veteran for Johnny Bravo, 34 years old, hands it to the young stallion, Jimmy Mickle, and now Matsuka near the goal line. Flips it in, and the goal good to Ryan Farrell. Farrell, a captain, a stabilizing presence. Very, very solid. I mean, you like Watson to Mickle, to Matsuka, to Farrell. Farrell played for the World Games team. Matsuka played for the World Games team. Mickle won the Callahan in a college championship. And at the peak of his powers, Bart Watson was considered the greatest player in the game. Johnny Bravo loaded with talent and an early lead here as they try to be the third repeat champion of the day from 2012. San Francisco Polar Bears, the mixed division, one in 12, one again today. Same for Seattle Riot on the women's side. Johnny Bravo trying to do the same, although they're trying to beat the defending champions from San Francisco Revolver. It's been a good tournament for Johnny Bravo. They beat Revolver in pool play 15 8, a win over Sub Zero yesterday in the semifinal. Five and two in a murky group play that saw three teams end up five and two, including Revolver. Revolver made a lot of mistakes offensively in the second half of that pool play game. It was 6-6. And then obviously Revolver closed 9-2. Uh, excuse me, Bravo closed 9-2. Robbie Cahill, the center handler for Revolver. And he throws a turnover looking for Rasmussen. Now Johnny Bravo, a chance for a 2-0 strike. By the way, for your, your curious, Kittredge and Gibson matched up with one another on this first O point for Revolver. Bravo Stoppage. looking for the break. Sorry, Wayne. Jack McShane was impeded there. Nice low laser, but it's knocked away. Good D by Revolver's Marcelo Sanchez. Now a hawk attempt from Robbie Cahill. Looking for Bo Kittredge as he tracks it down. Waiting for a teammate to join him. It's not a goal. As Sanchez will have to flip it in. He's been called for traveling, though. So they'll reset. Probably a good thing for Revolver is it allows the teammates to catch up. Gibson dropped off Bo to Austin Gregerson. Dump it back to Cassidy Rasmussen, who had a really big game yesterday. Not in again, right at the goal line as Robbie Cahill comes up with it. Cahill has a chance to dump it back. He does to Kosednar. Low liner is in from Kosednar to Cassidy Rasmussen. The big day yesterday, and he has the first goal today for Revolver. Cassidy deceptively really tough to guard. You know, Cahill just taking a shot with a matchup. Gibson doesn't get challenged deep very often, but when it's Kittredge in pursuit of the disc, it's an easier play because the legs got tangled, and Kassedner, the former Sockeye star, zips it in to Rasmussen. And there's no other way to put it. Cassidy's a big game player, and he's had a great weekend for Revolver. He 
11 goals this weekend for Rasmussen, the first one for Revolver today. It's a marquee matchup of two of the top men's club teams. It didn't work out for Revolver against Johnny Bravo in pool play. A nice win yesterday over Ironside. That was their other loss, was to Ironside in pool play, but they avenge that one trying to avenge this one as well you know here's how close revolver was to not even making it to the championship bracket universe point against sockeye 15 all they ended up getting that point deep shot to bow winning at 16 15. if sockeye gets that win instead of revolver likely revolver that's left out long pass along the sideline and a great d as Alex Evangelides swatted that one away. Evangelides, a great addition to this team. Spent much of the spring doing a, a bunch of work in Uganda. Tried out for Revolver, the former Carlton star. Now Revolver looking for back-to-back -back points. Good job by Evangelides there to stay in bounds. It's interesting, you know, Bravo got the one turn. Now Kawaoka looking deep. Nice grab near the goal line. And it looks like this is going to be coming back. Sam Canner, or maybe a timeout was called. That's what happened. Revolver stops play with a timeout after Canner makes a great catch down near the goal line. Yo Kawaoka. His hairs having fun in this wind. Take really? a look at how the men's bracket ended up. The standings in pool play. Five teams at four and three or better. Very tight near the top. In fact, that Sub-Zero Sakai matchup on Saturday morning ended up being a de facto quarterfinal matchup to move into the semis. Furious George knocked out at three and four. You know, Furious beat Bravo. Sockeye and Evolution. I mean, across the board, showing the, the potential that they had, but Furious just didn't have the depth here in Minnesota. So the point I was getting ready to make, Bravo got the one turnover from Revolver, but couldn't punch it in, gave it back. Quick deep shot to Bo and then to Rasmussen in the end zone. First turnover for Bravo, and now we'll see if the Revolver D-line can put it away. Good timeout call from Canner. Evolution, the team out of Columbia. All the Colombian teams stuck around. They've been watching the semifinals and finals unfold. Looks like Canner's going to seek his former college teammate, Alex Evangelides. See if he can get around Mickle first. Swings it out instead. Now Tim Gilligan will take a chance for Revolver. Another safe pass, and back it goes to Gilligan. Kawaoka flips it to the goal line. Now Gilligan right on the edge, and Revolver unable to score. Well, Mickle certainly fouled Tanner, but he didn't call it. And now in transition, they look for Watson deep. Watson able to track it down. Beating Evangelides to the disc. Now Matsuka at the goal line. Waiting for teammates, Johnny Bravo looking for the lead. They flip it to the line, and it's going to be a goal for Johnny Bravo. Brought down by Ryan Morgan. And it doesn't look like it's going to stand, actually. They're going to bring it back. You contested it. It's a violation. Contest. It's tough. It is. Yes, it does. You can either have a contested this space, or you can come to an observer. Your choice. I'll take the call back. Can't do it. You made the call. You made the call. You made the call. Which one? So, contested this space. He'll be back here. And Zuko wanted to take the call back. It's over, gentlemen. It's over. Get the stall count. Let's go. And Zuko having words with Brody Smith. Coming on six. Or rather, with Andrew Hagen. Now Matsuka taps it back into play, and we'll see if Johnny Bravo can score. They can to Westbrook. So after all that debate, it works out for Denver. 
So we got to keep track of break chances. Both teams' D lines are 0 for 1. Picking it up quickly off the turn. Watson's been doing that for a long time. Angelidi's throwing his body around. And let's see what happened here. Matsuka oh, made the disc space call. Forced to reset. And then to Westbrook in the end zone. Both of the goals so far for Johnny Bravo today have come from Matsuka assists. He has 15 in the tournament. Johnny Bravo out to the early lead. There's a lot of back and forth between these two teams and players that have played on both sides. Absolutely true. Bo Kittredge started out with Johnny Bravo during his Mama Bird days. So did Mark Cochran. Of course, Bart Watson, a longtime staple of Revolver. Kurt Gibson, number one, is getting ready to pull. He was the lone outsider to join Revolver in Sakai, Japan at Worlds in 2012. Okay, so they had an empty roster spot, reached out to Kurt, one of the most dynamic players in the game. He ended up getting injured and did not play in the latter stages of that tournament, but Revolver won anyway. And now Rasmussen looking for Kittredge. Too far. Boucher in pursuit as well, and he came up empty. Now Johnny Bravo takes over possession, already a 2-1 lead. What we've seen here the last couple of days, teams that jump out to big leads, sometimes they don't hang on for very long, but they don't give it all up either, and a huck there's a call made here. He's coming back. Great effort on that catch by Matt Farrell. There was a down revolver player near midfield. It was Kittredge. He was slow to get up, but he has gotten up. And I think Kittredge was picked. So it's probably going to go back to the far sideline, the throw before Kurt got it. Kittredge in the middle of your screen. And yeah, he sort of got unintentionally screened by Stanley Peterson, got tangled up. So Farrell will come all the way back. Schlag guarding Farrell. Johnny Bravo puts it into play, and now a huck attempt from Kurt Gibson. It goes out of bounds. Although this one's going to come back to two, it looks like. I think they call it a stall. But there's no way it's out. It's going to be here on one. Oh, that's that's a a tough break with that stall call. Because Bravo's gonna keep the disc despite throwing it away. It happened I guess after the call had been made. So the rule for the observers, they track the time limits, they saw player disputes. In that case, revolver caused the foul, but Ends up hurting them that they did so. Gibson lofts it out, complete to Jack McShane. It's fun to watch Kurt Gibson begin to streak deep, and then Kittredge, who's about 10 yards behind, begin to close the gap. Kittredge has the best closing speed or opening speed when he's breaking away. Either way. That I've seen from anybody in this sport. Right. Smart for Bravo to try to turn Bo into a handler defender. Unable to really get going on this possession for Johnny Bravo with the stoppages taking over. Now this is interesting. The pick was called downfield. Bo wasn't involved in the play, but it looked like he stopped playing defense when the call was made. But even though there was a continuation, it stays. Even though Bo didn't clear the call, one. it still stays. So Kurt Gibson right on the edge of the goal line. He'll tap this one into play. Johnny Bravo looks for a 3-1 lead. There it is. Easy does it from Gibson to Denison Beaches. And three of the first four in this men's championship game belong to Johnny Bravo. Now here's the, the real first chance for Mike Payne and Bob Cryer to tinker to their lines after the D-line scores. 
Do you let some of the O-line guys get back out there? Do you just refresh the D-line and let the O-line continue to stay fresh? And if you're Mike Payne, do you have the same exact seven out there? Denny Beaches was such a key guy for the Mama Bird squad that won it all in Cincy. And one of the unsung heroes of that team. Everybody knows Mickle, Morrissey, Peterson. Denny Beaches, along with Mark Rawls. Great role players for Jim Shetler's Mama Bird Championship squad. Fourth goal for Beaches in this tournament. So you see on the line for Revolver, Joel Schlackett, Bo Kittredge, Robbie Cahill, Cassidy Rasmussen, Chris Kasednar, like Jordan Jeffrey, and I believe Simon Higgins. Bunch of members of the O-line out there for Mickle, uh, for Bravo as well, playing D. Mickle, Farrell, Matsuka, Will Locke. Jackson Clure, Stanley Peterson playing D. Also Jack McShane. Oh, Kittredge breaking downfield, has it now, he's gonna flip it toward the end zone. Trying to track it down and able to do so. For Revolver is Simon Higgins. And a quick score for San Francisco. Oh, Kittredge really broke toward midfield and he got the disc in a perfect amount of time as Higgins took off right in the middle. Broke for the end zone. You see Kittredge with that cut. That really started the play for Revolver. Stanley Peterson, a guy who's probably watched Bo Kittredge play for a long time. Fellow great Mama Bird defender. Simon Higgins, first year member of this Revolver team, played with the Polar Bears in the past. Big, strong, athletic kid, six foot four, 21 years old. Between guys like Higgins and Greg Cohen, Jordan Marcy, Marcelo Sanchez, just 23, Eli Kearns, 22. You know, there's some old guys on Revolver. Here's the O line Ream, Keegan, Watson, Mickle, Westbrook, Ryan Farrell, as well, the captain. Now Johnny Bravo after the pull. Still working with the lead. First to eight since this game to halftime. First to 15 for the win. And an interception after a high throw. Like the wind got involved there as Revolver has a chance to tie now. Nice diving catch at the goal line. A quick flip for the score. Sanchez, rather that's Jordan Marcy who notches the game-tying score for San Francisco. Marcy from Kearns, a pair of 22-year-olds connect. And it's nice to have a guy like Ashlyn Joy picking up the disc. You know, backhand just soared in this win. That can happen, even to the best throwers. Russell Wynn and Ryan Farrell are really going at it. Just good, hard, clean ultimate. You know, the players on this team are setting the tempo of intensity and physicality. There's going to be a certain level of physicality in this game that is just going to stay out there. Gentlemen's agreement almost. Fourth goal of the weekend for Marcy. As Revolver has spread it out a bit for their first few goals today. Great effort from both sides, trading these first six goals as we've seen both teams play well to this point. Both teams have gotten one break. The offensive line, bunch of the same guys still out there. Russell win to pull. Greg Cohen's come on, Lucas Dahlman for revolver. One out of reach and out of bounds. So now Revolver with a chance for a third consecutive goal. 
Whether it's the first throw or the second throw, two basically first throw mistakes on back-to-back -back possessions for the revolver uh, for the Bravo offense. Revolver has been able to capitalize in the last couple. Nathan White feeds it back to Marcy, and now a stoppage. No count, right? Same one. Tap back into play as Marcy tries to work along Watson. Taking a chance deep down the sideline and no chance. Stall was called. You could hear Bart call it. I thought he got rid of the disc before the stall call, and it's going to be a turn regardless. So no stall, but Bravo will have the disc and 70 yards to go. A matter of field position there as they will loop it all the way back. This is a 70 yard field in length. End zones are 20 yards, 40 yards wide from sideline to sideline. It's Johnny Bravo intercepts again. Greg Cohen has continued to run so hard defensively. Saying one or saying two? Saying one. Ray Cohen saying able one. to cut that disc off. And now Revolver trying to cap a 3 0 run by taking the lead. It's Dolman who goes end zone and a slip. Cohen was there as he tried to stop his momentum. His feet went out from under him. That looked painful. Glad to see him pop back up. You know, Lucas Dolman. A fiery defender, a great athlete. Still working sometimes on his decision making. I thought that was a good decision. He may have thrown it just a touch behind him, and obviously he couldn't keep his balance. It's a break for Bravo. And through the hands of Keegan on the sideline. So now Johnny Bravo will take over. And the revolver will take over after another Johnny Bravo mistake. I think what we're seeing here is, is just the defensive intensity that revolver is bringing is starting to wear on the Bravo cutters a little bit. And revolver very fresh, very young, and they just run their butts off. Ninth game in four days for these two squads. I mean, how much does fatigue? play a factor here as this one goes out of bounds. Certainly more so in the second half than in the first half. The two teams also do have depth and have shuttled roster members in and out. Now, key members missing for Revolver include Patrick Bayless, who's at a wedding. Aside from Bayless, most of the guys are here. Devin Anderson and, and Josh Wiseman of injuries. Timeout called. And Bravo is certainly missing a more extensive list. A 3-3 tie here in the men's championship of the 2014 U.S. Open. We take you back to the 1981 the World Frisbee, World Frisbee championships. championships from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Who wears short shorts? So the ultimate all-stars intercept it. The ultimate All-Stars of 1981. Look at this layout. There are some veterans playing in this Revolver Bravo game, but none of them were around at the Rose Bowl in 1981. Kittredge might have been there. There's a high one. Good catch that time by the All-Stars. Mike Bo just turned 32 or 33. Celebrated his birthday in June, I know that. Or that hammer throw for the point. Another hammer there. All we're missing is the scuba. Are they going to count it? Certainly not missing the long hair and the beards. We have that in today's game, too. See? Mark Watson rocking the beard. Bart could have played in any era. No doubt. But Jesse Ream out there, he's got better hair than all of those 1981 All-Stars. Ream down on the, near the sideline with that long dreadlock ponytail. Reem going deep, looking for him. Cohen defending. There's Jesse Reem trying to make the huck catch, and he can't get it. 
Slipped out of his hand. Might have mistimed his leap a little. He did, but he read it well. And he should have made the play. Timeout called as ref, the observers talk about that. Jesse Ream couldn't quite corral that one. Kind of glanced off his forehead too, but we've seen some turnovers on this point as both teams now try to break a 3-3 tie. Superb effort we saw from Jimmy Mickle yesterday and his Johnny Bravo squad as Mickle guards Russell Wynn, who has the disc for the moment. Revolver and Kittredge, who has scored goals. He's assisted on plenty. And really, you know, you talk a lot about Revolver, the 2013 U.S. Open champions. Trying to get back to another national championship. As this one goes deep. And Mikkel able to knock it away, but you could argue that Johnny Bravo may be the most talented team out there. We're just getting ready to, to mention some of the guys that Bravo doesn't have. Nick Lance, Callahan Award winner from Georgia Tech. Josh Ackley, Callahan Award winner in Colorado. Tim Morrissey, Craig Forshee's out with an injury. Ian Toner out with an injury. Hilka and Hitta Sneeder, neither could make it this weekend. All established stars. A punt of sorts there as the disc flails out of bounds. And then you have Brody Smith, who's been here for the weekend. He's only played one point. Basically not really ready to play man-to-man -man defense yet. He went in there to play zone one time just to give it a try. But the goal is to get Brody back for Worlds. Great effort by Lucas Dahlman. And Johnny Bravo will take over as these two teams trade turnovers. Certainly more turnovers than I would have anticipated in this first half. Maybe they borrowed it from the women's championship game. Tons of turnovers in a 10-7 win for Seattle Riot. That's a nice throw from Nickel. Full cross field, low bullet. Never got more than three feet off the ground. Now Watson trying to make it happen, sends it back to Matsuka. Good call downfield, so Watson will retreat. Work, Dolman! Johnny Bravo stacks their offense. A couple of players near or in the end zone. Reem, the deep back. As this one goes near the sideline, and now a shot for Reem, and there he is. Jesse Reem gets Johnny Bravo back on the board. A frustrating point, but it works out for Denver. Keegan, the truck stop transport, picks up the assist. Matsuka, the hockey assist. Missy Ream is just remarkably quick down the field. Very reliable receiver. And he's a guy that obviously his teammates have great confidence in. They, they, they continue to feed him the disc near the goal line. Ninth goal of the weekend for Ream. Questioned his aerodynamics yesterday with that hairdo, but if you're faster than everybody, it doesn't matter if you need that extra speed or not. There's Bob Cryer, who was a pretty good player in his day, although the first time he ever went to sectionals after he started the UCLA team in 95. He got bageled by UCSB, told me, the UCSB team that won nationals. Boucher, Kittredge, Rasmussen, Cahill. Out there with Schlag, Sanchez. This pull will go into the wind. A swirling wind, it's changing directions a bunch. 
Sednar, the other member of the revolver O-line we had not mentioned yet. Sanchez looking deep, now coming underneath. Oh, Kittredge looking to get rid of it, dumps it back. Really well defended downfield by Jackson Clure. Cahill takes a chance anyway, and wide open downfield. The catch made by Nick Schlag. Stop it's maybe a pick. Either back. way, a great huck here by Robbie Cahill. And they're going to send the disc back because of it. Coming back because of a pick. Tough break. As Schlag found himself open, exploiting the Bravo poach. Although a pick prevents it from Sustaining. Johnny Bravo is the lead. They started with a 3-1 run. Revolver came back to tie, and now Johnny Bravo 4-3 lead. It's Revolver with possession. Mike Payne says Robbie Cahill's has been really rejuvenated after taking a year off. Swing it out toward Rasmussen. Now Cahill again. Pitches it back to Rasmussen. Oh, here's Bo. It was tipped on the way, but it still ends up with Sanchez. Bo had a step on Gibson, too. Gittridge trying to find an opening and break toward the end zone. In the meantime, his teammates go with the short route to Kittredge. Nice flick out to Rasmussen. Red zone chance for Revolver looking to tie. And they dump it in for the goal to Chris Kosedna, and Revolver able to even things up again. High release flick from Bo. Comes in handy. A little flip back in, trusting his teammate Kosedna to attack the disc. If Kosedna hesitates, for one millisecond, this gets deed up. Beaches was right on his tail. And, you know, Kurt and Bo have played together long enough, played against each other long enough, too. Kurt had a sense that that high flick was coming. He almost got a piece of it. You know, Bo yesterday was wearing a hat with the initials E-R-I-C, as you see Rasmussen's assist total. ERIC stands for Early Recognition is Critical. At the peak of Kurt Gibson's powder, powers when he was in college, diagnosed with cancer. Thankfully, he was diagnosed early. Went from one of the top players in the world to a guy who could barely walk, and he's fought the entire way back to just an unbelievable high level. He went from not being able to walk to becoming a world champion in, in the span of about a year. And he's generated a lot of awareness for the organization, Eric. Early recognition is critical. Incredible story and incredible resolve. One of the top ultimate players, one of the top ultimate teams as Keegan goes deep for Matsuka. A sliding catch and a goal for Brett yes, Matsuka. Johnny Bravo retakes the lead. Well, you know, Matsuka's not the typical deep target, but I think this is how Bravo, you know, feels like it can play. You know, exploiting mismatches, Matsuka has a bunch of years in terms of youth on Kawaoka. And Yo just couldn't stay with him deep. By the time Martin Cochran got there to help, it was too late. The, the big thing for Revolver, and Bravo's going to score its points. You want to make him work for it. That's the kind of goal that Bravo gets too easily. Here's the line in the offense again. Rasmussen, Cahill, Kittredge. 
Simon Higgins. Revolver will get it back, down 5-4. One thing about Revolver, they've got several Farragher Award winners. Talk about the spirit of the game, and Bart Watson won that in 2010, Cahill back in 09, Martin Cochran 2012, and Kittredge last year. This is a team that really embodies what Ultimate is all about. I think that's what attracted Bo Kittredge to the Revolver team to begin with. Question about it. Revolver formed in 2006. A trio of founders, Nick Handler, Chris McManus, Mark Weinberger. And Jam was still the top team at the time. See, it's a windy day. The tent blew over in the U.S. Ultimate information table. You can get a nice lot catch. of good information at that information tent. Right, once they get the tent back up, as Rasmussen fires it in. Now Revolver set up for a goal, Jordan Jeffrey. Simon Higgins back out to Rasmussen. This is the, the type of play yesterday where Joel Schlock had always got open, and there he is. Oh, oh air laser, bounce. and it goes to Bo Kittredge. As Revolver evens it up again. Gotta say, air bounces can be really pretty. They're typically discouraged because they're dangerous throws. Watch him release this disc. He's going to use his thumb to push down and let it elevate back up. Everybody, every team has at least one guy who's really good at air bounces. The guy who did it on my team got married last week. Nick and Emily. Wish I could have been there. <laughs> Great throw there by Joel Schlacken. Five different goal scorers for Revolver. Five different players have assists for San Francisco. Back and forth they go in this first half. 14th goal of the weekend for Kittredge. One of the stars of Ultimate. Writes a blog for Skyd Magazine. He doesn't mind being controversial on that blog either. He's very well, he speaks outspoken. His mind. He speaks his mind. And he's a clever dude, and he's perfectly fine with you disagreeing with him. He encourages it. On that pull, the wind smacking that disc down as Johnny Bravo begins this possession. First team to eight sends this game to halftime in the men's championship. He also on his blog has, has put some silly commenters in their place. It goes through and it's going to be a goal to Sean Keegan. It was nearly tipped by Eli Kearns who left out of bounds to go get it. And the disc curved back perfectly inbounds along the sideline. Well, it's a really tough throw, but Kearns really thought he had it. Just jumped perhaps one step too soon. He had the angle. Owen oh, Westbrook picks up the dime. Oh. There's sometimes as a defender, you go up and you can't figure out how you didn't deflect the disc. And this is one of those times for former UC Davis star Eli Kearns. Big swing and a miss. More like Austin Kearns. Sean Keegan with his 15th goal of the weekend. As just an incredible curve to that disc. Putting Johnny Bravo back on top, a 6-5 lead. Between the two teams, 11 total goals. They've all come from different goal scorers. And it's been a different player with an assist on each side. Now Revolver able to start a new possession, down one. And 
the hands of Bo Kittredge. As we watch these club teams compete, there's also the AUDL that a lot of these guys participated in as well. Five lead for Denver here in the first half. As Revolver shoots it back, Robbie Cahill to Sanchez. A left hand scoot ahead to Robbie Cahill, and now Cahill finds the end zone. As the goal for Revolver goes to Evan Boucher. It hasn't been as clean as we thought it would be, but it's certainly been as close as we expected. Now at six is low release from Cahill. A little bit behind Boucher, but he made the adjustment before the former Hodag, Will Lockie, could get there. Really good spacing downfield. And you see Rasmussen move into the middle, timing the cut with Boucher going to the outside. If Rasmussen a crystal clear, creating space for his teammate. Cahill found him. Ninth goal for Boucher this weekend. I think when you watch teams trading goal. When you watch the revolver offense, the way the cutters work in tandem with one another. And the handlers as well, creating solid resets. Handlers can become cutters and vice versa. Everybody's always moving and running. And they run such a methodical approach. These two teams met earlier in pool play as Johnny Bravo picked up the victory then. Revolver's two losses. Coming to the two teams they've met in the championship bracket. They avenged the first one to beat Ironside yesterday in the semifinals. And Scuba from Matsuka to Mikkel. Now he shoots deep. What a catch. Sean Keegan. They roll him in bounds. Keegan now with a chance for a point. Back to Mikkel. Quick bump there as Mikkel collided with Sam Canner. Not just for you, but your entire team. The marks are too close. Back up. It's forceful. TMF. Team misconduct foul against not only Canner, but all the revolver players being too aggressive, evidently. And now Mickel feeds Westbrook near the goal line. Mickel makes a cut. Westbrook flips it to the end zone, and Watson wasn't there. Watson wanted more of a dump instead of the throw to the end zone. Fantastic red zone defense from San Francisco. First team to eight cents this game to halftime. This would be a break if Revolver could go the full 70 and score with the D line. Revolver is led in this game. And a chance here on the Huck. All the way back to the end zone, and the catch made by Eli Kearns as Revolver grabs the lead. Ashland Joy doing what Ashland does. Guy who was playing on the sidelines when his dad was competing. Ashton was just a little guy. Just a fantastic throw, slicing that disc with a win with exquisite rotation. Punctuated by the kick spike from Kearns. Eli Kearns 
perhaps a future star for Revolver. And certainly when the time comes, you know, when a guy like Kittredge takes a step back, Kearns is a guy who's capable of taking a much bigger role. And Revolver in front for the first time. And now a point away from sending it to halftime as Johnny Bravo will get it back here after the pull. You know, Revol it's not like Revolver is an old team. Only three guys on the roster, uh, four guys who are 30 or older. And, you know, two of them have already taken breaks. Robbie Cahill, Martin Cochran, Bo Kittredge, and Yokawa Oker, the others. And they all can still play. A pull from Tim Gilligan. Hands in the end zone, good shot there, about 12 yards deep in the end zone. We saw the team misconduct foul already come out against Revolver. What would happen if they got another one? You get one more warning and then the third time it'd be a yardage penalty. Let's see if indeed Revolver does play a little bit off defensively. Of course, age is just a number. Bart Watson, the oldest guy on the field. Still a perfect throw. Ryan Farrell now. Trying to work around Dolman, and now some conversation between those two. I laid out here, you see So it's been calling double team, or no, double sorry. Um, distance, too far away to stall, so they say. You can come to me, not to him. He's never in orange. Because you're laying up there. Let's just all this right now, Jensen. Come to me or leave it as a stance. He contests your call. Come to you. Okay. So like, he was close enough. He was in three meters. See, so last year right here was five, saying six. Saying six. Observer said within 10 meters. I think he meant within 10 feet. He'd be within 10 feet of the marker to initiate the stall. So basically, three meters and. Oh, that was a bad mistake by Farrell. It's like he was teammates with Ashland Joy. And now halftime point. I'm tired. I'm getting tired. I've fucking got seven hours here. Revolver can go into the break with a two-point lead. <laughs> Trying to break this chain of 2012 repeaters. Wait, wait, wait. We saw please, the San please, Francisco please. Polar Bears yet. win the mixed title earlier. All right, go ahead. The women's championship to Seattle Riot. Both of them won in 2012 as well, as did Johnny Bravo on the men's side. Revolver won last year. And another stoppage on the far sideline. Come here in four, saving four, saving four. Tap it back in. Sam Canter flips it back. Ashlyn Joy as stoppage again occurs. Jimmy Mickle flanking Ashlyn Joy. Hammer throw toward the end zone, but it's out of bounds. Johnny Bravo will take it back, down one, with halftime approaching, first team to eight. No one asked him the way I do. He's his own harshest critic, and I, and I bet he's, wish he could take that last throw back. Jimmy Mickle. Smacked from behind there by Canner, so. There aren't too many people in the sport that play a more aggressive brand of defense than Sam Canner. He already got in trouble earlier. Team misconduct foul. Canner getting close to Nickel again. Okay, let's get it going. I don't think the TMF's gonna dissuade Canner from continuing to play his brand. Well, you get two before anything happens. And a low throw there helps Revolver's cause. That disc spins all the way to the goal line. And a quick strike as Revolver sends this game to halftime. 
Russell Wynn with the eighth point of the half for San Francisco. And an 8-6 halftime lead for Revolver. Sam Canner was late getting to the tournament. Wondered where he was walking around the field Thursday morning. He's got a late flight. And off the turn, he wastes little time. Matsuka couldn't even get situated defensively. That's just transition offense. Not even really a mark set by Mickle. Every goal and assist in the first half from Revolver came from a different player. As we take a look at group play, an 8-6 lead for Denver in that one. It's 8-6 in this one, but it's San Francisco who has the lead. Jimmy Mickle was on fire in that game for Johnny Bravo. Five goals from him. He's been quiet today, though, as Revolver grabs an 8-6 lead here at halftime. Mike Payne is the head coach of Revolver, and coach, good first half ends well, certainly for you guys. Yeah, I mean, I think we've talked about this, both uh, Evan and Wayne, before that one of our key strengths of this tournament and any tournament uh, for Revolver is our depth, and I think we're wearing them down, uh, or at least we did in that half. We hope to continue that in the second half. Mike, we saw Eli Kearns make some plays, 22 years old. What's the potential for this kid? Oh, he's off the charts. I mean, at, at the end of the day, uh, he's a lot like Greg Cohen from yesterday. Um, he's somebody who has incredible intensity. He's got skills. Um, he's learning how to play at this level. He makes some mistakes. Um, but in that case, uh, he made one mistake, and then he got a great play. So uh, that's how we build great players on this team. And if you would, give us your perspective on what the wind is doing to the disc down there. Which way is it going? <laughs> it's pretty much going every which way at different times. So uh, at the end of the day, what that means is we just have to keep playing hard D, and we can't be uh, discouraged by the fact that there are a lot of turnovers. Whoever punches harder uh, for the longest in this match is going to win. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, guys. Mike Payne, the head coach of Revolver, an 8-6 lead for San Francisco in this men's championship game at the U.S. Open here in Minnesota. 8-6 as Revolver has the lead over Johnny Bravo, men's final at the U.S. Open. As we visit with the head coach of Denver, Johnny Bravo, Bob Cryer, and coach, how tough is it to beat a team like Revolver twice in the same weekend? Well, they have some of the best uh, ultimate players in the world. Uh, a bunch of Team USA guys that, that we know pretty well, so we knew we were going to get their best game today, and, and the conditions are, are pretty challenging, and they've been a little bit better right now in those conditions. Bob, is it as simple as that you just made a couple of uncharacteristic first throw turnovers? Why do you see yourselves trailing right now? I think that we're not getting enough movement uh, out of our handlers. If we can move the disc uh, early in the stall count, things open up downfield, and when we hold it a little too late, then when we're trying to get that late reset, uh, it's just too much, too challenging. It's now one on one, and they have some great athletes that are able to close that down. I mean, there's been so much talk about the roster you guys have put together. What would it mean today, right now, with the guys you have here to win this tournament and beat Revolver twice in the weekend? Well, I mean, the the guys that we've had here today and this weekend uh, have been fighting hard all weekend. We've, it's been great. We know we've got a lot of guys coming for future tournaments, but uh, it would be fantastic for these guys to close it out uh, and know that we're going to have reinforcements for some of the bigger tournaments coming up later. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Bob Cryer, head coach of Johnny Bravo, as they trail at halftime. 8-6 to Revolver. It's the championship game in the men's bracket on the U.S. Open Tour here in Minnesota. 8-6 as Revolver has the lead over Johnny Bravo. It's halftime in this men's championship game. Pretty good first half, although we saw some stalls in the offenses. Largely, though, both teams played pretty well offensively. Well, both teams made some plays. Johnny Bravo early, Jimmy Mickle to Matsuka to Farrell. Pretty, pretty strong players, and not even including Kurt Gibson and his target, Dennison Beaches. Laid a Revolver to Kittridge at midfield. He shoots one. Looking for Higgins, and he's got it. On the goal line, Sean Keegan. He's been perhaps the most underrated addition to this Bravo team. And a key playmaker all weekend long, one of the statistical leaders. Kittridge with that fancy high release flick. And then Rasmussen near the goal line. Little high flip just does get to Chris Kasednar before the defender got there. Brett Matsuka, not the typical deep threat, but he will go deep. Makes a slide and grab in the end zone. 
Air bounce from Schlocket to Kittredge. And now Eli Kearns just missed the D. And Keegan, fortunate, gives a thumbs up. <laughs> you know, Bravo went up a break. Revolver got that break back and then takes half, 8-6. And Revolver will receive to begin the second half, too. Ashland Joy, just another beautiful put. Eli Kearns with a punctuated kick spike. And, and that was the type of careless turnover that we saw. And you heard Bob Pryor talk about, we just got a little stagnant, both in terms of handling and cutting, quickly capitalizing on it. And that's why Revolver leads by two. Eight different goals from eight different players for Revolver. All six goals from Johnny Bravo have been from different players. So certainly both teams spreading it out in the first half. And we'll see how it shakes out in the second half of this U.S. Open men's championship on the line. An 8-6 lead for Revolver. The second half's opening pull coming up next. Eight six revolver with the lead over Johnny Bravo as the second half is about to begin here in Minnesota, U.S. Open Men's Championship. We take a look back to how the offenses looked early on in this game, especially for Johnny Bravo. Well, this was the first point of the game, and it's something that Bravo's gotten away from. You know, they took their time, they had good flow, they had good spacing and movement, and there was no rush, and they did, got, did not get uh, broken or did not turn it over at all on this first point. Now continuing to move downfield. And this is the type of offense they need to return to. Keegan in no particular hurry here. Dump to Watson. I just thought it was important to take a look at what Bravo does here offensively to be successful. Because the offense stagnated late in that half. Johnny Bravo will try to pick it up in this second half. You saw Jimmy Mickle right at the outset of that clip. And if you look back at his first half, no goals, no assists. Very unusual to see Jimmy Mickle silenced for an entire half, let alone one that Johnny Bravo has kept close. You know, statistics can be so misleading, but in this case, they're really not. He, he was very quiet in that first half. And you know, really the only time I can ever remember Jimmy, I don't want to say struggling, but not being an imposing force on a game was in the semis of Nationals last year against Revolver. There were some plays that he could have made that he didn't make. There would have been spectacular plays, but you sort of expected him to come down with a disc a few times when he didn't. And it'll be interesting to see if they try to get him involved a little bit more. He's out there on the deep point to begin the half. Cahill picking up straight to Kittredge, who tumbles over but hangs on, guarded by Gibson. Big point here as Revolver leads by two. And moving very briskly downfield already to the goal line. Higgins waits for some help, dumps it back. Now Kosedna. Give to Cahill. Cassidy Rasmussen looking end zone. Short route instead to Cahill. As Cahill flicks it into the end zone too low. Good defensive stand by Johnny Bravo, especially as Revolver was right on the doorstep. And they had pretty good spacing most of that point. Nick Schlag got caught in a tough spot near side of the end zone, far side of the field. And Johnny Bravo doesn't have the disc for very long. As Revolver will get it back, we talked about Johnny Bravo's offensive ineptitude in the first half after a good start. Not a very good start to the second half. First of 15 wins the U.S. Open. Crowned two champions today, San Francisco Polar Bears in the mixed division. On the women's side, Seattle Riot, the only team to go undefeated through this tournament. Nice choice by Bo underneath the Cassetna rather than the deep shot. Now Revolver trying to win a U.S. Open title for the second straight year against the only other team to ever win one. Johnny Bravo took it in 2012. I think Revolver is better at picking its spots in the deep game than any other team in the open game today. You know, they take their shots, but they're very cautious with them. 
And, and it's hard to be cautious when you have a guy like Kittredge. It could be tempting to want to throw it deep every time, but you know he's so dangerous in these red zone situations too. Almost unguardable, and that's a big hold of serve to begin the half. And the biggest lead yet for Revolver. They didn't even have the lead until it was later in the first half, and now a three-goal lead. A 4-1 run for Revolver, capped by Bo Kittredge. A little hesitation move from Kittredge, trusting Jeffrey to get that break throw off. You know, Gibson has to respect the hesitation because Bo could explode the other direction. Kurt Gibson, number one in red, has some great facial reactions when he gets frustrated. <laughs> Kittredge's hand is so big, it fits inside the entire disc perfectly. As he pancaked that last one, you can see his hand fit like a glove around the Frisbee. Sometimes you think it's an extension of his hand, the way he always catches it. And if you put a strap around his hand, it would, it would be. Bo Kittredge gets on the board in this second half. Now the biggest lead yet for Revolver, biggest lead in this game for either side. Johnny Bravo scored three of the first four goals. It's been all Revolver since then, an 8-3 run since that point. Johnny Bravo is stagnated on offense. And their only possession of this half, one throw before it turned over. Now Owen Westbrook flips it downfield along the sideline and overthrows it. A point here for Revolver, and it's going to be awfully tough for Johnny Bravo to overcome it. Especially with the soft cap looming in about 15 minutes or so. Tim Gilligan flicks it ahead to Sam Canner. Now Canner goes with an underneath toss to Gilligan. Revolver trying to stay patient, waiting for something to open up. Bo Kittredge not on the field here. Canner with a fake, now a dump off instead. They flick it downfield deep, looking for the end zone. Cochran with a dive, but he can't make the play. Looks like a good chance there for Revolver, but Martin Cochran with the defense beat. Unable to track that one down. Now the huck that win oh. knocks away from Jimmy Mickle. Not the wind. Russell Wynn. <laughs> Nickel still had a chance, but after Wynn interrupted it, a change of trajectory and spin on the disc made it unable for Jimmy Mickel to catch. The wind has done plenty, so has Russell Wynn for Revolver. Gilligan with Westbrook forcing him. Sends it back out, and now they work it around the side of the field. Wide side throw goes to Andrew Hagen. Into the middle, Cochran flings it to the end zone. Too much. Way too much. Way too much. A misread there by Cochran. He thought there was going to be some Wind to backload that disc toward the field of play. Instead, it just carried out. This is probably been the longest point in the game so far. It's up there. There was a long point when it was right around 4-4. And a huck here looking for Jesse Ream. He's got it at the goal line. Wide open in the end zone is Keegan. Ream couldn't get rid of it, though. He finds a teammate instead a little bit closer as that goal goes to Ryan Morgan. And 
Johnny Bravo on the board in this second half. Very important point for Bravo, and again, deep shot to Reem. Had a couple steps, reads it well. He milked it as far as he could, but unable to get into the end zone. Pretty good mark set up by Lucas Dahlman. Not a whole lot he can do there with the defense in such scramble mode. He at least made him go to his second look. May have gotten away with a little bit of a foul. Yeah, let him play. I mean, that, that's what the offense wants to do. It, the offense is at a disadvantage if everybody sort of has to stop and retrace their steps. Everybody's hustling down to get involved in the play. Well, the more flow there is to the game and the more consistency you see from the offenses. Just keeping those muscles flowing is just from a, an exercise standpoint. To have to stop and start and stop and start, there's no way to get into a rhythm. I think you just described the no huddle offense. Exactly. Second U.S. Open title for one of these two teams. For Johnny Bravo, it will be their second in three years. Revolver, their second in a row. Every 2012 champion has won again this year. And Johnny Bravo trying to make that a trio. Nice play, but it's going to stay alive and a diving catch by Cassidy Rasmussen for the goal. Jack McShane thought he had the D, and he really did until Cassidy Rasmussen just displayed a great awareness that's become typical of number nine in the revolver, white and red. Robbie Cahill lets it fly. McShane gets a piece for Cassidy Rasmussen with some horizontal happiness for revolver. That's just great awareness. Look at it, follow the disc. Didn't give up on that at all after it was deflected. He's also shy of the goal line when he dives, but easily lands in. First point of contact on the layout bid. Back to a three goal lead for Revolver, matching their biggest of the day. Game to 15, at least for now. Revolver tries to win its second straight U.S. Open title, trying to avenge both of their losses in this tournament. They lost to Boston Ironside in pool play. They won yesterday in the semifinals over them. They lost to Johnny Bravo in pool play. Gibson thought about hucking it, but got better, and they go with the short pass. Now Westbrook looks for a lane. Zooms it ahead to midfield. Touch back to Gibson. He flings it forward, going for the end zone. And able to make that catch. Westbrook hangs on. A quick strike from Johnny Bravo. Got to credit Westbrook for the good spirit there, too. You know, Nathan White hit him from behind. I don't think that was a reckless bid. Certainly some unnecessary contact. It would have been shocked to see a TMF there. But Westbrook doesn't get angry with him. Looks like he's going to get up and spike the disc. And then, no, nah, he just laid off and helped Nathan White up. Seemed like Nathan White backed off a bit. Did they give him a TMF? I, I think they maybe they did. And actually, they might have given the second team misconduct foul of the day for aggressive defense against San Francisco. One more of those would result in a yardage penalty. So San Francisco hanging on to the lead. Now 10-8 over Johnny Bravo. Jeffrey Rasmussen, Cahill, Higgins out there with, of course, number 50. There's Joel Schlackett. Mike Payne told me the other day 
Our best player is Joel Schlacken. Nobody knows who he is. <laughs> I said, why is he your best player? He said, he just never makes mistakes. He's just super solid. And I think Schlackett really has made a name for himself at this U.S. Open. Payne called him a revolver prototype. Guy who played for Dutchie, Alex Gesquier, Cal. Oh, Cahill. What happened? For a lawn dart, now it's Johnny Bravo with a chance to make it a one goal game. Bravo needs to capitalize here. Nickel and Gibson, little one two. Nickel has not had a goal in this game, he has not had an assist. Has Revolver done anything in particular to slow down Mikkel? They have an army of defenders that play him tough one on one. And Mikkel's going to take a timeout. A deep point here, but they got a lot of great offensive players out there. Like Gibson, Mikkel, Farrell, Will Lockie, and Brett Matsuka out there as well. So they will converse as an offensive line. Probably just seven or eight minutes away from the soft cap horn going off. Right now it's a game to 15, but I don't think it will stay that way. And as the U.S. Open wraps up with this final game, take it back to the opening ceremonies on Friday night. Columbia involved, the U.K. is here. Teams from Canada, and of course, that's Sean Keegan waving the flag for Bravo, representing the USA. And the United States in full force. As the opening ceremonies of the U.S. Open featured all 24 teams, including the eight from outside the U.S. Third year of the event, three divisions. Revolver won the men's title last year. San Francisco Fury on the women's side. Montreal Odyssey on the mixed bracket. You look at the 2012 winners. All the winners from this year so far. One in 2012. Johnny Bravo trying to make that a trifecta. Quick little handler cuts here. Jimmy Mickle. Tight defense there from Jordan Jeffrey. Another TMF would result in a yardage penalty. That's not what's going to happen here, but certainly something to keep an eye on as Revolver continues to play its aggressive defense. Mickle with the flip ahead. Johnny Bravo moving toward the end zone, trying for the point, and they get it. It's Stanley Peterson getting Johnny Bravo back on the board and suddenly a one goal game. Out of the timeout, like a handler weave with Farrell, Gibson, and Mickle. They're all working off each other in that one break and the quick timing of the continuation. I mean, you know, Jimmy Mickle's not in the stat sheet in terms of goals and assists, but Bravo scored because Mickle got that flick break. We need to have better statistics to account for the most important throw that led to the score. Crystal clear. Get that on the stat sheet. That's, that's another one. <laughs> We're just waiting for you to revolutionize the game. Yeah. I mean, you're the voice of ultimate. You have to do it. The, res the responsibility is yours. I'm going to need some help. No, I mean, you're the, you're the guy. The heavy is the head that wears the crown. 10-9 lead for Revolver in this men's championship. Revolver tries to get their offense back together. They've given up a couple of goals. Uh, Boucher with a great break. And he's the one who makes the catch downfield. Now what to do with it? The cup surrounds him, but he breaks through. 
Cassidy Rasmussen can do it all for Revolver. Now it's Kasedna. Robbie Cahill, another all-around player, looking for Kittredge. And Kittredge couldn't get it. And Bo, I think, called a foul, saying Peterson got him in the back, and it looks like there's no contest. That'll put Revolver right on the goal line. Great effort by Kittredge, despite the foul. He'll have, he'll tap it in. And then you can walk it up. Now Bo Kittredge to try to finish the point for Revolver. Looking to go up by two as stoppage occurs again. And watch how Revolver's organizing here. See the contact from behind as Peterson was close to the D and then just landed on Bo's back as he could have made the play. Good call. Foul. Contest. And the organization here. Make sure boys are ready here. Diagonal stack. You can rearrange in the end zone. Pick, and a couple right, handlers. A lot of options here. There it is for Revolver inbounds, Robbie Cahill. And a crucial point for Revolver as the soft cap horn is about to blow. It's been fun watching Robbie Cahill play with Revolver this week. You know, did not play last year, played mixed. But he's getting back in really good shape. He was a phenomenal college ultimate player. Stanford bloodthirsty. Johnny Bravo's O-line there. Well represented by great talent. Some of the elite athletes in Ultimate right there, including Jimmy Mickle. They're going to have to draw back from a big deficit here as this one gets late. And in the D line here, Eli Kearns is going to pull out there with Wynn, Evangelides, Hagen, Canner. It looks like Dahlman and Marcy. Soft cap one will blare in four minutes. Right through Jesse Reams' hands, and it's deed up by Wynn. You know, when this game started, Kirk Gibson was playing on D line. Now he's rarely coming off the field, serving as one of the main handlers on the O set. I think a pick was called, but it's going to be a turnover. But it's just interesting, you know, how Bravo has managed its personnel. And, you know, Bob Cryer is going to be the tactician who puts all these pieces together as Mickle shoots deep. Wide open there and a point for Johnny Bravo. Matsuka gets the goal. And once again, it's, it's Mickle who has the most important throw of the point. But well, if we're counting hockey assists, he gets one. But really, it's Gibson and Matsuka unleashing. The back end. It's a breakdown there defensively. As Revolver didn't have anybody on Gibson or Matsuka. Gibson just standing there by himself. Even Reem over there without any white jerseys around. And Jimmy's had a, a lot of mentors in the sport. Obviously, you know, he played for a Callahan Award winner, Jim Shetler at Colorado. Bob Cryer has coached some of the top talent in the country, both at the, the national level and with Johnny Bravo. And you know, we asked Jimmy last night, who, who's the guy you look up to most on this team? And he said, you know, playing with Bart Watson these last couple of years, a guy has accomplished his number six in red, has really done wonders. The O-line, Jeffrey, Rasmussen, Cahill, Higgins, Kittredge and Schlockett to Bo's left. Eleven ten revolver. This one kissing the clouds. A high, long pull from Johnny Bravo. Again, Gibson on Kittredge. 
Partridge dumps it out. Nick Schlag has it for Revolver. Now Higgins. Schlag's another one of those guys that, you know, nobody really hypes on any ultimate web. You don't see articles about Nick Schlag on Ulti World or on Sky. But, you know, he's just so super solid as a dump, as a handler, just doing the little things for Revolver. And he's like on the all glue team for sure. Ulti World should do an all glue team this year. <laughs> Over to the side on the goal. Red zone chance for Revolver. A couple of defenders getting tied up for Johnny Bravo. And, and you know, aside from Bo and Ashlyn and probably Cassidy and, and a couple others, this is a team of glue guys. It really is. And Cassidy Rasmussen hauls down the point for Revolver. And a 12-10 lead. As the soft cap point is about to go off. This will be... A game to 14. So calm offense. Bravo clearly flustered. Trying to switch, but you know, you, you can't switch if you're not committed to it. You know, Stanley Peterson wasn't committed to running up line with Rasmussen there, and it's an easy score. Third goal today for Rasmussen. He had a big game yesterday in the semifinals as well. 13 goals over the weekend. This would be quite a coup for Revolver after losing to Ironside and Johnny Bravo in pool play to beat Ironside yesterday in the semifinals. Knock off Johnny Bravo today. The U.S. Open Championship and a wash of their two losses. Those are two of the primary thinkers. The head coach, Bob Cryer, Ryan Farrell. 31-year-old captain. Grew up in the East Coast, grew up in New York, played at William and Mary in college, and played for Pony, Pride of New York, before moving to the Rocky Mountain region. There's a soft cap that'll go on officially after this point. If Revolver scores with a break, it'll be game to 15. Otherwise, it'll be 12-11, game to 14 with Revolver receiving. And Gibson picks up Matsuka, his dump. Mickle, Watson, Keegan all downfield to cut. There's Jimmy Mickle, unable to handle it, but a foul will be called as Win draped on his back. You know, I, I don't think Win's going to contest this. But, but said he wasn't. You know, Jimmy Mickle knows that no matter what cut he makes, Russell Win is attached to him by a string. You remember that as a cutter. There goes Mickle trying to catch up as he makes the dive and catch. Great effort by Mickle on the dead run. Now Matsuka. What Jimmy just did there, something Bo Kittridge often does. He just runs as fast as the disc sometimes. He just turns it on to warp speed. And into the end zone, it looked like a goal, it is. As Johnny Bravo gets that point to set the soft cap into motion, Ryan Morgan makes it a one goal game and now a game to 14 in this US Open Men's Championship. Set up by this upline shot, Matsuka. Looked like it might be too far, and then he turns it on. And I mean, come on, Jimmy, that's a gratuitous layup. Unnecessary. He needed to stop himself. Game to 14 now after the soft cap. And a one goal lead for Revolver. Johnny Bravo has done what they can to stay alive in this one. Well, Revolvers had them at an arm's length, They're up by three at one point in the second half. Mike Payne with that clipboard. I know he has a great appreciation for what Mickle brings to the game. You know, last year, the World Games, the U.S. mixed team went to Cali. 
led by, you know, a guy like Ryan Farrell, Brett Matsuka on Bravo, Bo Kittredge, Ashlyn Joy on Revolver. A few years from now, Jimmy Mickle is going to have a big role on that next mixed World Games team if he stays healthy and stays committed. Jimmy Mickles had a great year. Callahan Award winner. Collegiate National Champion for Mama Bird of Colorado. Oh, what a D. And a huge play there for Johnny Bravo. They could tie. Unless a foul was called. Will yeah. lock you with the D and it might not stand. Yeah, Austin Gregerson fouled Cahill on the mark, I believe. Tremendous handler defense from Lockie in the pocket of Chris Kasednar. Oh, here in the throw. And it was a foul on the throw and no contest from Gregerson. On you, defense. Back in play for Revolver, needing two more goals to win the U.S. Open. Johnny Bravo seeming to turn on the Jets defensively here. And Locky on top of Kosedna. This one will come back. It's a good switch. You know, Ryan Farrow was playing such tough handler defense that Rasmussen started a bolt deep. And now they do switch with Farrell taking Boucher. Rasmussen picked up by Matt Farrell, Ryan's brother. And that could be the break that Johnny Bravo needed. They come up with the D and now a chance to tie. Game to 14, and Johnny Bravo turns it over immediately. Looking for Cahill. Cahill's got it. And a big turn of events swings Revolver's way. One point from a victory, they're up 13-11. It's a disastrous throw. San Francisco capitalizes immediately. Nice put. Good bid. Cahill takes care of business. We saw two sort of low blady flicks there. Kittredge could not come up with one, and this time Lockie could not make the spectacular catch. So Bravo with their backs up against the wall here. First things first, take care of business on the O point. I'll take a 3 nothing run from Johnny Bravo. Here's the revolver O-line on the sidelines. Going over everything. Letting the defense take care of business. This will be the second straight U.S. Open title for revolver. And, and much like Fury in 2012, revolver was not at the U.S. Open. Revolver representing the United States and Japan, winning the gold medal under the guidance of not just Mike Payne, but Alex Gesquier coached the team too. If you need just one goal to put this thing away, you've got a little bit of a cushion. Let me just send Bo Kittredge to run as fast as you can. Huck it to him. Might see that on Revolver's possession. Of course, I'm sure Bo would love to see the defensive line get a break here and just start the celebration, and they there might it do is. it. Greg Cohen throws his body around again. Revolver with a chance to win it right here. Championship point. That one's too far, and Johnny Bravo gets it back. So much has been made about Bravo's influx of superstar talent. Revolver has young, up and coming star talent. Guys like Cohen and Kearns and Higgins. Pickle frustrated with Russell Wynn, who continues okay. to bump into him. Every time I get him, I'm getting hit, is all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. We're good. We're no one. I think Jimmy Mickle wanted a team misconduct there, but didn't get it. He's got a case. 
Already been a couple against Revolver today. They have played tough on this Johnny Bravo team. Especially when you're thinking about the ninth game of a tournament, last day. Revolver wearing them down. You heard Mike Payne during halftime say it's the depth of Revolver that has allowed them to be this aggressive against Johnny Bravo. Choi lays out of the mark. Now the Gibson on the hammer, hammer throw to Matsuka. And it counts for Johnny Bravo. They pull within one in a game to 14. Well, we know who Revolver's O line is going to be. Let's see what Bravo does defensively here. Matsuka, very aware of his spot on the field. Impressive throw, but for Kurt Gibson, that's somewhat routine. So Bravo will keep Gibson and Mikkel on the field. Looks like Farrell's going to stay as well. Matsuka will get a break. It's Schlag, Rasmussen, Jeffrey, Cahill, Handler, Stalwart, Simon Higgins. He's been a good downfield threat. Hasednar, and of course, Kittredge. Game to 14. This will be a championship point for Revolver. Peterson, McShane, Farrell, Clore, Gibson. With Beaches and Mickel. Obviously must score for Denver. Jimmy Mickel on the pull. That is a sensational pull. Yeah, we'll let it roll out of bounds though and they'll have a chance to grab it from the front of the end zone mm -hmm. instead of the back. Front of the end zone but near the sideline and it rolls so far away that you get to set up your defense. In this situation, that is just about as good of a pull as you could possibly expect. I told you my plan. Just send Bo Kittredge 70 yards downfield and see what happens. Gibson's covering him. We'll see. Kittredge with a shortcut. He's going to stay close. And a stoppage here. A foul's been called. These two have been teammates. Kurt stays at Bo's house when he visits San Francisco, which he does a lot. These past few months. Same one, right? Three, two, one. Let's set them sets. Bo and Ashlyn and Cassidy all living together with Kurt stopping by. Deep shot looking for Higgins. This would do it. Higgins for the win. He's got it. Simon Higgins tracks down the long huck, and Revolver wins the U.S. Open. Fourteen twelve, San Francisco makes it happen. Their second straight U.S. Open title. They avenge both of their losses in this tournament in the semifinal and final rounds. Cassidy Rasmussen shooting it deep for Simon Higgins, the revolver rookie, just 21 years old, and he outleaps Jackson Clore. Revolver raised their game a notch. Bravo has a ceiling that perhaps we haven't seen in Ultimate in recent years. But Bravo still has work to do, and I'll be the first to admit it. This very well could be a preview of the World Championship game in August in Italy. Two spirited teams, two incredibly talented teams, both well coached, and a revolver has the mental edge heading into Italy. 2014 U.S. Open champions, San Francisco Revolver, their second straight U.S. Open title, a 14-12 win over Johnny Bravo. 
The 2014 U.S. Open Ultimate Championships are presented by the Discraft Ultra Star, official disc of USA Ultimate. Ask your retailer today for Discraft Ultra Star. The Triple Crown Tour, America's most competitive and prestigious series of Ultimate Tournaments. And by USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. To learn more about Ultimate or find out where to play in your area, visit usaultimate.org. Once again, Revolver U.S. Open men's champions as they win for the second straight year. They beat Johnny Bravo 14-12 here today as we visit with the head coach of Revolver, Mike Payne. And coach, how important was it for you to avenge both of these losses in the semifinal and final rounds? Ironside goes down to you guys yesterday and Johnny Bravo today. I think it's super important. I mean, those are two teams we will have to go through at Worlds and at Nationals if we want to win those two titles. Um, but you know, winning this tournament is a huge notch in our belt. Um, it's the first leg of the Triple Crown Tour. Um, and more importantly for us, we achieved what we came here to do, which is we got better every game and we empowered some of our young guys, um, Greg Cohen, Simon Higgins, just going off uh, in that game. Uh, and it's good to see, because it means that our, we're getting deeper and deeper and that's our advantage. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned the young guys and I think the story of this tournament is Bravo had so many people talking about all their new superstars, but you guys just got young players that haven't necessarily made their names yet, and they did it this weekend. Were there any tough roster decisions in bringing aboard guys like Higgins and Cohen and, and Kearns and even Chris Kasednar? Um, I mean, you know, one thing that we've been uh, looking to do is to increase our height, and so somebody like uh, Eli or somebody like Simon, who's so good in the air uh, and or so big, uh, there's no concerns with taking a six foot four guy who's really fast and catches the disc well uh, on your offense. So uh, we had a couple of roster spots open up after we won nationals last year. And y when you can bring on that type of talent that listens and plays a role and gets better over the course of the year in a moldable way, I mean, that's what we're all about. What is a revolver tryout like? A revolver tryout is more intense than the game that you just saw. People want it really, really bad. Um, and we don't have any guaranteed spots except for the captains. Um, you know, some of the veterans uh, are pretty assured of their spots, even though they don't have one officially. But um, the discipline that we bring is that those veterans bring all of their intensity to those tryouts so that, they, that we can actually see what the young guys have the potential to do. All right, head coach Mike Payne, congratulations. Thanks very much, guys. See you soon. Revolver wins 14-12 over... Johnny Bravo as they get their gold medals for winning the U.S. Open Championship. Our Discraft Ultra Star plays of the game as we take a look at Cassidy Rasmussen after a deflection, an incredible layout, and a diving catch for a goal. Yeah, sometimes you need to get a little lucky, and Rasmussen on top of that play after McShane's tip. Cassidy diving into the end zone, and then the final point. Rasmussen rips another big backhand to the revolver rookie Simon Higgins. You can't teach six foot four. And he attacks the disc anyway, wearing the Bravo defender Jackson Clore on his back. He hangs on for the revolver. Two point win. And standing by Cassidy Rasmussen, you do it all today. The goals, the assists. Talk about your game. Um, I mean, I came into this game, you know, with a lot of uh, remembering last year in the finals and what, what we had to do, what, what the fight we had against Ironside, the revenge for the loss that we had earlier in the tournament. And it's the same thing this, this weekend, right? We lost to Ironside early, we lost to Bravo earlier, and we were really hoping to get a chance to, to come back and show them a better game. Um, and I think we did that, and, and our focus was all on our offense and uh, clean, clean looks uh, all game, and I think we did a great job generating that. Cassidy, do you think you avenged the losses because of tactical adjustments, because of depth, or because of another reason? Um, there were certain tactical adjustments, but I don't think that was the, the biggest factor. I think the biggest factor was just the hunger that we, we, we showed in the second, the second showing there. Um, really, you know, it was a big chip on our shoulder going into this game, and the intensity was a lot higher than it was on the first day. Uh, they caught us pretty flat. We weren't ready for their athleticism. They beat us, you know, around, all around the disc. And this time, we really focused on, on stopping their disc movement, making them throw a lot of throws, and just making those windows really small for them all game and that got us the turns that we needed. All right, go take that team photo. All right, thank you. Cassidy Rasmussen of the gold medal winning US Open champion, San Francisco Revolver, as they put together a 14-12 win to wrap it up over Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo getting the win yesterday against Sub-Zero. Revolver beat Ironside to move into the finals. They avenge both of their pool play losses by taking out Ironside and Johnny Bravo en route to the victory and the US Open championship for the second straight year. Cassidy made it 
And that wraps things up for us here in Minnesota. Great tournament, a lot of fun carrying the 2014 USA Ultimate US Open. It's Revolver who wins the men's championship here today. For Evan Leffler, I'm Wayne Randazzo saying so long from the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. Final score, San Francisco Revolver 14, Denver Johnny Bravo 12. To watch this entire game on replay, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. We thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN.